let's try a little something. Let's do a little uh, activation. And Steve, I think we're going to jump into this up front. I thought maybe we wait till later, but we've been talking about how to be priests, how to love like Jesus, who laid down his life for the ungodly. Now, we have a lot of uh, uh, good actors and uh, maybe a lot more bad actors around the world who are heads of nations, kings, presidents, uh, chancellors, and I, I don't know what all their different names are. But uh, So we have a lot of uh, rulers. And, of course, we're supposed to pray for those who govern or rule over us. How do we pray? Do we recount the evils and the ills and Lord, you got to remember us and redeem us from the, or save us from the fiery pit? Or do we go on the proactive? Uh, let me make a, a kind of a crass analogy. This is not really accurate, but um, if we are plaintiffs all the time, asking for God, please come through for me, God. Now, this is the crass part. We're, we're like a liability to him. Now, that, that isn't really true, right? Just don't go there. But I'm just painting a picture to contrast something. So, it's like a liability to God. So, he's having to do something for me in order to do something for the kingdom. Okay, the contrast is... What if we get on the God side of the picture and we actually partner with him and whatever he's doing, we do. So now, that's, that's the two contrasts. One is we're a partner, the other is we're a liability. Don't take that very far because that breaks down and it's not really accurate. But I'm painting a contrast. Okay, let's take this verse in Revelation 22, verse 2. And we're going to paint the picture of the river of God. It's also seemingly painted in the picture uh, in Ezekiel, the river that starts under the throne, flows under the doors, and then out until it says it's uh, up to a man's ankle, and then up to his knees, and up to his thighs, and then it flows, and everywhere it flows, it brings forth life. And so. Uh, Let's go now to this Revelation passage, seemingly the same scenario. And let me just read. It says, and it flows down the middle of the great street of the city. And on, ox, and on, sorry, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. Now, right now, we know we're not in an earthly situation because in our world, trees only bear fruit once or maybe twice a year. But this is bearing fruit every month. It's always in season. Now, that's there's a key word right there that some of us will get revelation on. Being in heaven, it's always in season. Okay. Now, the next sentence. And the leaves of the tree, trees are for the healing of the nations. And by the way, the tree is on both sides of the river. It says, on each side of the river stood the tree of life. Now, this is a tree of life. Now, I don't know, but I have a feeling it's the same tree of life that was in the garden. But it's on both sides. On each side of the river, it bears fruit. It's always in season. And it has leaves. And those leaves are actually healing for the nations. Now, here's our little activation if you care to, uh, should you care to accept this mission. <laughs> I think we heard that in some TV series somewhere along the line. Um, mission Impossible or something like that. But this is mission, this is mission possible. <laughs> uh, so remember, we're priests. We're priests unto God. We're priests standing in the place of bringing the kingdom, administrating and administering the kingdom into earthly places. So, since you and I are already seated with Christ in heavenly places, there's no hoops to jump through to get into the heavenly places. We're already there. Whether we believe that or experience it or not is, is, is a moot point because we're already there. What we want to do is just go ahead and engage it. 
and believe it and ask the Lord for how to walk in it. So what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I'm just going to acknowledge the Lord first of all in his wonderful kindness and his graciousness to put us in this amazing condition, place, location to be in the heavenlies. And then not only that, but it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And then beyond that, what do we do with that kingdom? So I'm going to then invite us to go to those that tree of life and take the leaves as emissaries, as ambassadors, as priests, and take those leaves, and we're going to ask Holy Spirit then to bring to each one of our mind some leader, some actor on the global scene and uh, bring that leaf to them and feed it to them. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of where we're going to go today, at least for (laughs) this first activation. Let's see how that works out. All right, you guys up for it? All right. (laughs) Heavenly Father, thank you. You are just blowing our circuits. You are busting our brains because our brains had been so uh, uh, steeped in Smallsville in a little box and you're just breaking off those old paradigms and giving us so much more liberty and expansiveness wow thank you Father it's all because of your wonderful design and your love for us. Somehow you see something in us greater than we have seen in ourselves. And that's just staggering and melting. Melts our hearts to believe that and to come to terms with that. But we love that about you, Father. You make us to be more than we ever thought we could be. Thank you. We love you, Father. Oh, wow. We love you. And Father, Jesus told us that it was your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It was your happiness. You had joy. You had great delight to give us the kingdom. Wow. Wow. It just... Is that possible? Could it really be true? And of course it is. So, Father, we want to receive it, embrace it, put it on like we'd put on our shirt today. Just put it on and go ahead and wear your good pleasure. The thing that you've dreamed of, we just go ahead and put it on. Oh, the kingdom. That's my portion. That's my inheritance. That's what you delighted to give me. And I'm sure that I don't even know what that really means. I'm just learning. But today, Father, could we enter in with you, enter in with Jesus who always lives to make intercession for us, Could we do the same for those around the earth? Today, Heavenly Father, we'd like to, since we're already in heavenly places, we'd like to walk up to this tree of life. Since we already have eternal life now, every one of us here are sons and daughters of the living God. You said we'd live forever. Have... Uh, and not perish, but have everlasting life. So we've already eaten of the tree of life. We come up to that tree now, Jesus, and and the word says that these leaves on these trees, this tree is for the healing of the nations. And how does it bring healing to the nations? Well, most likely one of the ways is through us. So today, we just walk up to this wonderful, beautiful tree of life. 
bears fruit in every month of the year. It's always in season. We approach this tree and you take a leaf. And the Holy Spirit, we ask you to impress upon us a leader, president, or king, or prince, or whatever, of a nation. And begin to feed this leader and this nation from the leaves of this tree of life. Now I'm just going to back away just a little bit, leave a little more space, but if you don't mind, engage with Holy Spirit for an impression and ask Holy F uh, Heavenly Father and Holy Spirit, how should you administer that leaf? Do you lay hands on them? Do you feed it literally in the Spirit to them? Do you hold it over them as a banner? Just ask Holy Spirit, what's the way that he's impressing for you to bring healing to that nation? Thank you, Father, for inviting us into this wonderful kingly and priestly role. Wow. Lord, we're in the process of partnering with you to redeem the earth, to redeem the earth, that's what you told Adam, go subdue the earth and take dominion over it. Bring it into righteousness. Bring it into rightness. Thank you, Father. Father, then by faith, thank you for helping us to administer this wonderful, redemptive healing. Healing for brokenness, healing for sin, healing for dysfunction, healing from the ravages of evil. Thank you, Father. What an amazing dream you've held in your heart for us, your people. We love you. Amen. I had a little picture or two of my own, uh, but I just opened up to you if you'd like to make comments. What, what did you see? How did you, how were you instructed or impressed to administer healing to the nations. Wow, Steve. Uh, I didn't tell you what I saw, but that's exactly what I saw also. I said the word banner, and I realized I've never thought of a leaf as a banner before. I've never thought of a banner as a way to administer the love of God or the healing of these trees, the leaves of the trees. Never thought of that before. But as I did, the more I did it, oh, it just came alive in me. So, and Steve, that exact song, uh, his banner over you, his banner over me, his banner over us is love, love, love. And that's the exact song that came to my mind. So it just really blesses me that that was on your heart also. And so how does that work? Well, I think of Jesus, of course, on the cross and during the most unjust uh, consequence of men's fallenness. He's getting murdered at the hands of the true guilty ones were the people, but they're the ones murdering him. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He, in essence, is creating a banner of love to fly over them, to, to wave over them, to herald over them 
God loves you despite your sin. And somehow God thinks that's redemptive. <laughs> and it is, you know. It cracks the hardest heart. It melts it with the most wonderful process that is not traumatic. And it doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. Something gets awakened down deep and begins to be reformed refashioned and desire awakens so anyway i i saw that over our country here uh, in the u.s lord the banner of love waving over our nation it's not just a faulty uh, uh, no not just a flippant little banner that's kind of well we hope so no it creates deep impact in the hearts of the actors and I didn't have a specific actor in mind at the time because I was so taken with the idea of those leaves becoming a banner. Now, it, it, that doesn't say that any other form of administering the healing of the nations uh, uh, is not accurate. In other words, the Lord is so wonderful. He has many different ways that he can uh, uh, awaken to us to partner with him. Can you think of count or can you see in council rooms of the leaders of the world, you know, whatever level that is, whether it's governors of states or heads of nations, and they have their council, their cabinets around them, right? Can you see the leaves of the nations and however we as the priests of God are influencing the spiritual realm around them? We're, we're hovering over, we're creating an environment where if there is nefarious, uh, evil intended thought processes that are wanting to conspire, rather we're coming in with something to trump that, becoming something greater than that, to supersede that. It invades the environment so that the dark talk, the dark cross traffic, doesn't happen, but rather there's this changing of the mind. Think of Balaam. Remember Balaam? He's going he's gonna to be a hireling. He's going to prophesy for a wicked king against Israel. He goes there, I think, three times with intention to prophesy adversely against Israel. And he gets there, and all of a sudden the Lord makes him prophesy favor and blessing to Israel and the heathen king is just incensed. Like, how could you do that? I'm paying you to, to prophesy and then you prophesy blessing, you know. And it's there, there we have a dramatic biblical example of the Spirit of God changing the mind of a man. I believe it's nothing less than that powerful and dynamic as we learn to walk in this level of uh, influencing the nations of the earth with the love of God from these trees of the uh, trees on and leaves of the trees. Sorry. Anyway, fun stuff, fun stuff. So I like it that every one of us have not been uh, given to or given into uh, some kind of retribution, punitive kind of vindictive kind of uh, uh, response pattern. Uh, you know, I'm sure we've all thought of it. Uh, we've all thought of it like, you know, what? I don't know if they're deserving of this. <laughs> but of course, that's what Jesus said on the cross. That was his full intent. You guys don't deserve any of this, but I am coming alongside you even when you don't deserve it. Okay, but my point here is, I believe two things. I want to kind of build a little case here for us because this is really important. Why is this important? So that you live long on the earth. Okay. Anybody want to live long on the earth? <laughs> okay. We don't give our things, self to things too lofty for us. Now, that's what David said. I don't give myself to things too lofty for me. In other words, I don't try to meddle in areas that are beyond my maturity or outside of my lane, as we say in our society. That's not in my lane. So, but how can we move into territory like we do today, like we did today? 
I think is because we're not trying to move somebody's furniture. We're not trying to adjudicate justice. We're not trying to uh, administer retribution or punishment on them. We're actually giving something that Jesus modeled for himself to for all of us to give love to those who are ungodly. To love the ungodly. To come alongside them. To give love. I believe as you and I stay in the mode of giving love, I don't think that we have to fear any kinds of uh, heavenly retribution or, or uh, you know, interference in our life. Now, when you and I, just let me kind of say this little aside, when we get into soul power, soul power is exercising thoughts, words, and deeds out of the carnality or unredeemed or unrenewed part of our soul. When we get into that, then heaven has to stand in our way. You know, remember when Balaam was wanting to go prophesy? Something stood in his way. A donkey started talking to him. Come to find out an angel with a flaming sword would have killed him if, if Balaam hadn't stopped. So when we get into soul power and want to shift somebody's furniture around or whatever, bend their will, then heaven, I believe, uh, is is close to uh, interfering with us. And we have biblical example and precedent for that. But you and I are staying safely in the grounds or territory of administering the love of the Father. We have seven things that we administer, and we don't have to limit it to seven. It's just kind of how we've gravitated to. And we give light when we're giving away we're giving away to individuals or things or environments or entities. We give away light, life, and love, power, presence, joy, and the shalom of God. See, somebody said today, joy, giving away joy. And we've all said giving away the love of God. And so I believe with those kinds of uh uh, releasing from us the priests of God into the kings of the earth, I think we can expect to have the protection of heaven, the support of heaven, and expect to live long on the earth. <laughs> so uh, then one final thought on my little point here is, what if intercession as we grow into things like this, this is not the only way to have intercession, but what if we learn a form of intercession like we've engaged in today, that it becomes skilled, we become mature in it, we, we understand, oh, I come alongside the bad actors like Jesus did, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And we come alongside them to crack open the stuck and hard places, the dark places inside of them by what? Not by vindication and by force or by swinging the sword, but by releasing love. And so uh, I, I'm pretty taken with that. I'm pretty confident that my, what I call intercession for my personal life, I think for the rest of my life, will be more in keeping with this mode than the mode I grew up in. doesn't make what I grew up in bad. It's just all I knew then. But I think we're growing into something better. Well, fun. Let's just, uh, let me just return back to Father. We started with Father and let's return back to Him. Father, You bless our hearts. You really do. You bless us. You make our hearts soft and melted and just so appreciative because we're looking at what you're doing, your handiwork. We can see your fingerprints upon us. You're literally changing our understanding, which then begins to change our mind, which then begins to change our words and actions. And that spills out to changing our world. Wow, Father, it's just so good to be in your kingdom just so good to be in your family. 
the benefits. Oh, uh, uh, what's the psalmist say? Uh, uh, and forget not all your benefits. I'm sorry, I can't remember the first phrase. And forget not all your benefits. Thank you for your benefits, Father. They're better than we've ever dreamed of. Better than we expected. It really makes it exciting to walk with you. You're the best dad ever. <laughs>